Hi everyone, it's Hermes with your weekly hewing message. This week, I'm a little excited. This week we speak about going on a mission. This piece is entitled, Follow Me. After this, he said, follow me. And so ends this week's gospel passage taken from John 21. By this time, Jesus has already been resurrected, appeared now for the third time to the disciples, and soon he will be leaving them. What's interesting in this exchange is that there is no record neither here nor in the other gospel accounts of where Jesus was taking Peter. Of note is that this instruction is given after a final test, as it were, to which the disciples had been subjected without them even knowing it, while they were returning from an unsuccessful fishing trip. Let me share with you a few observations. In this encounter, they were told to cast the net to the right of the boat. They did as they were instructed, without question. This counters the experience at the beginning of Luke's account of the call of the first disciples, which can be found in Luke 5. The second observation is this. They readily identified the risen Lord. Remember, just a couple of weeks ago, they were dismissing the account of the women as an idle tale. Luke 24 verse 11. And just last week, Thomas doubted and had to stick his finger in the wounds of Jesus to be assured that he was indeed beholding his Lord and his God. John 20 verse 28. The third observation is this. They lost no fish, even though the nets were laden. This again is unlike their experience as recorded by Luke in Luke 5. When their nets were beginning to break, such was the size of the catch. And the final observation is this. They didn't need to know where he was taking them or where he was staying. Again, contrasting their novices' curiosity, as recorded by John in the first chapter of the Gospel according to John. If we're to be guided by these four observations, we can safely say that the disciples passed this test. Finally, on several occasions, they were scolded for their little faith or for still not getting it. Now, they were being given the nod as Jesus coolly beckons, follow me. Thankfully, now the scales have fallen from their eyes and they were made to see. Finally, after all that they had been through with the master, they were ready to be sent out. There will be moments on the pupa's journey when you will be tested before being sent on a mission. These tests will be easier to pass. You see, at this stage, the lesson has already been learned and you are more than ready for the mission. However, the master needs to give you one last test for you to note yourself that you will succeed and that you are ready. This is not about the master assessing you. No, this is about the master proving to you that you have been well prepared so that when you go out on your mission, you go out in the strength of the Lord confident that you can do all things through Christ. So, is this the end of the journey? You fulfilled your purpose and punto final? My friends, not at all. The party now start, as we say in Trinidad and Tobago. This is just another leg of the journey towards purpose. Perhaps it would be opportune for me to point out that purpose is fulfilled only at the end of one's days, but there will be many missions on the journey 
towards purpose. You see, the purpose journey is a lifelong one. So, you might ask, is all of this purpose journey talk unnecessary? If it's only completed at the end of one's days? My friends, call this purpose journey talk a map that helps you to navigate your way towards your purpose. Let me reflect with you a bit. In October 2020, I published a piece entitled, Do You Know Where You're Going To? In that piece, I shared that I didn't know where I was going, that I was about to step into the unknown, a place I didn't relish, but a place I recognized as necessary on the road to purpose. I concluded in part, my assurance is this, the unknown doesn't last forever, and which eat with each step I take during this period, I am one step closer to fulfilling my purpose, and that is known. My commitment is this, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize. I share this with you so that you appreciate that the unknown, the uncertainty, the fear, the pain, the anguish, and the list of unbearable emotions and conditions are bumps, puddles, and ditches along the way to purpose. Getting over them and emerging from them allows you to build the strength required for completing your purpose journey, for completing each mission along the road to to purpose and with a sense of fulfillment. So what does it take to move past the bumps and emerge from the puddle holes and ditches along the way? It takes hewing. That's right. It takes improving your human effectiveness at work. Hewing. It takes hewing so that the beauty of who you were created to be can shine. It takes hewing so that you can be stripped, shaved, and separated from the career or purpose stalling behaviors, mindsets, attitudes, and words that sometimes land you in the ditches in the first place. Hewing is painful, but it is worth every moment of it if you reverently submit yourself in patient endurance to the work of the potter as you are molded into the beautiful creature you were meant to be. Beauty that the years of wrong decisions, careless actions, bad habits, and self-destructive words can often bury. Hewing requires you to allay your fears. Be still and concentrate so that you can enter the unknown and listen for the guidance of the one who is the way and who will lead you from the dark into the light. Hewing requires you to embrace the uncomfortable, for that in itself is the beginning of the test. Hewing is the preparation for the journey towards the greater part of your days. Understanding the greater part of your days to mean the more impactful and significant part of one's days. As I shared in my piece entitled, jar give I strength. Hewing prepares you for purpose. At the end of it, or at the end of a cycle of hewing, you will be held up before the mirror, just as the disciples were, as I shared at the beginning of this week's piece, so that you might be convinced that you have been well prepared and are set for your next mission, your next mission as you journey towards the fulfillment of your purpose. 
As I close, I pray that you too will hear the approving words. Follow me. Until next time, love, peace, and joy.